Hi, Eli here from MoboxGraphics.com. In today's tutorial we are going to take a look at different techniques to get a 3D wireframe or blueprint effect in Cinema 4D. So to start off I'm quickly going to add some shapes here to explain the techniques. The first thing you probably know already is that you can change the display mode up here. If we use the garage shading lines option we get this wireframe look but with no control and we cannot render it like this. Same thing goes for the lines mode. It also doesn't look that great to be honest. So as a first technique let's go into our render settings and add the effect cell renderer. Let's render it untouched so we can see what happened. And this looks pretty clean but we're missing a lot of lines and this is because our edges checkbox is still deselected. So when we check this you can see it instantly looks better. So this technique is really quick and easy and also a great way to make things look like a blueprint in a matter of seconds. To make it look even more like a blueprint let's go to some blueprint images and copy those colors to our cell render settings. And as you can see the lines usually aren't exactly white, it's some kind of off-white bluish color. In a render you can see it starts looking similar, but in the background we're missing this grid. And the easiest way to do this is adding a plane object in the background. You can use this either as a floor or as a backdrop. But looking closer at this you can notice all the lines are being equally as bold. And also regardless of how much I zoom in or out it's always the same thickness. And this can be really useful in some situations, but sometimes you want to have more control over how your lines look and you don't want to have them doing this automatic scale thing when zooming in or out. So that is where our second technique comes in. To start off create an atom array up here and to make my point clear I'm going to drag the figure object inside of it. And depending on how big that object is you'll get a decent looking effect or something ridiculous like this. So what the atom array is basically doing right now is adding a small sphere on every point or connection of our model and connecting these with some smaller cylinders. In the settings you can play around with the size of each of these and most of the times I end up with a size of 1 cm. If you make both equal in size you can see we get rid of the spheres and just keep the lines. But taking a closer look at the complexity of this particular model, a 0.5 size probably works better, so things don't start overlapping each other. Let's create a second atom array for our platonic object here. And it is a little less complex, so you can enter a bigger size for this one if you like to. And I'm gonna render this, and this actually looks pretty cool, but it's not exactly what I was intending to create here. So let's get rid of this cell render effect in the settings. But now you can see there isn't much of a wireframe effect going on. Once again this is possibly an effect you can use in some projects. I can see this work for statues, jewelry or maybe a skeleton structure of a building. But in this case I want to show you guys how to turn this into a flat looking wireframe. You can turn anything in a flat looking object by creating a new material and disabling all the channels right here but only turning the luminance channel on. There you can set any desired color, but for now let's stick with the default white. So let's apply this to our objects and see what happens. And what this luminance is doing right now is actually emitting light from the object itself. And because it's so bright there is no possibility to get any shadows on it, so it looks really flat, which is a nice hack for us to use. Now on the figure here you can notice things are looking quite busy and because everything is the same color this gets even worse. So I'm quickly going to apply the effect to our torus instead so I can explain it more easily. And the reason this is looking so messy at some points is because we can see straight through our object, including all the geometry in the back. But there is a simple trick to fix this. I will show this on the platonic object here. What we need to do is duplicating our base object and placing it outside of the atom array. And you can already tell this obviously gets us rid of the geometry in the back, regardless of how we move the camera. But this way our shading is back again, so let's create a new material and only keep the luminance again. But this time set the color to whatever your background is, so in this case this will be just black. And this way everything will start looking flat again. If you pay a lot of attention to the details and look closer at this object, you might notice the outer lines are not always as bold as those at the front. 
When we reverse engineer our technique, you can remember we are not working with outlines or strokes, but with 3D objects. So what is happening here is the inner black object we just made is slightly overlapping our white cylinders because it's still at the exact same size. So what we need to do now is scale down our black object by the size of our atom array. Also make sure you don't make it too small because you'll get a gap which looks even worse. Alright, so that works. Let's try this with the other objects as well. And as you can see on the torus, this cannot be done by just simply scaling it down because of the hole in the center. Instead, we need to scale down the ring radius. Now for this plane in the back, just the atom array will do because it's already a flat shape anyway. But now for the figure object, things are a little bit different again. If you scale it down, you can already tell it won't work. So what we need to do is make the object editable by pressing C and then make sure you select all the children objects under it like so. And now you can connect and delete so we have one single object. From here it's just a matter of selecting all the polygons and using the extrude tool to shrink it. So we need to enter a negative value which will be 0.5 in this case as we made the atom array quite small. So that is it for this technique. You can see we now have more control on how bold we want our lines to appear. And it also gets bigger when we zoom in, unlike the cell renderer. Of course you can also add color instead of the plain white. And a nice bonus effect is to add a glow to it, so you can turn it into a more science fiction looking wireframe. I'm going to turn on my interactive render region here, so you can instantly see what happens. And now you can play around with the values to get something you like. The back intensity probably needs to be set at a very large number, so it can kind of counter the large falloff of the glow itself. So these were the two techniques I wanted to show you guys. From here on in the tutorial I would like to use this atom array technique to replicate the Odessa logo in 3D, so we can add all kinds of animations to it, unlike when you would simply make it an illustrator or something. So I downloaded the image as a reference, and let's start with a new file here. I want to have that image reference as some kind of background, so what I'm going to do is create a new plane and set the size to the exact dimensions of the image I just downloaded. You can scale this afterwards, but I just want to make sure the proportions are right right now. Now if you create a new material and set the image as a texture on the color channel, you can apply it to the plane and have a nice reference to work with. To create the actual shape, it is pretty easy for this one. I actually kind of made it already when showing the techniques earlier in this video. It basically is a platonic object you can find up here. And you can already scale it roughly to the image in the background. But make sure you move this reference plane a little bit further to the back so it doesn't intersect with the platonic object. And now I'm going to use the front viewport so I can perfectly work on top of the image. But you can see the image is lost here so we need to set our display setting to garage shading or something. And I'm also going to apply the atom array technique so I can see where the lines overlap each other. At this point it was a little bit of trial and error to find the exact rotation to get it to look like the logo. But I found out it has to be rotated 90 degrees to the side and 20 degrees towards us. Looking at this as a solid object again you can already tell we are getting really close. But the triangle in the front doesn't really line up like in the logo. A thing we can do to get closer to the original is playing with the perspective. So let's create a new camera and with the mark next to it being selected, you can see all the values at the bottom changing when we move around. But we want to reset it right now, so enter a zero in every field. And now we are exactly in the center of our scene, just like the logo. We can back off a little bit with this camera control at the top. You only want to use this one now, so you don't change any other values. And as you may notice, you can already tell how the front triangle aligns differently when we zoom in or out. I noticed setting the focal length to a very large number got me the closest to their logo, because it also straightens out the lines at the sides. If we would pick a very small number, you can see how different the shape starts looking. Which is also interesting, but not what we need in this case. But let's continue our technique and duplicate our platonic object, and then add the luminance material to them. 
Also make sure to shrink our inner platonic object so we don't see through it anymore. And I'm gonna set our focal length back again. Actually something like 120 already works just fine. Now finally we can animate this. For Mike's tutorial you might have seen earlier, we made it rotate horizontally. So what I did was grouping them together and just rotate them. But that kind of made it wobble because we already rotated the object. The next thing I tried was rotating it on the already angled axis with a new null. But it also didn't work out when you look at it from the frontal camera. It will always stay wobbling. So I concluded it is impossible to rotate this on the horizontal axis when looking at it from the frontal camera. And that is because when you look at the shape from the side you can see it isn't exactly as deep as it is wide or long. So the best rotating animation would be to have it turn towards us or away from us. That's the only option for this one if you don't want to make it wobble. So when you got it like you wanted to you could just go and render this out. And the fun part about these techniques is that it renders super fast. You can also probably tell you can use this in any kind of after effects situation where you just play around with the blending bones and keep the white lines on top of something else. Actually Mike did this in his video so make sure to check that video out. And that was it for my part of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.